Welcome everyone to this webinar to introduce Apache Tomcat 8.5. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Thomas. I've been a Apache Tomcat committer since December 2003 and you'll find me posting on the Apache Tomcat lists and other lists around the ASF as Mark T at apache.org. Currently, I'm the release manager of her Tomcat 9A and now 8.5 as well. I'm also a member of the Server for Expert group as we work on the new version of the specifications for Tomcat 9. My day job is as a consultant software engineer at Pivotal, where I have a very simple job description, which is go and work on Tomcat and do good stuff. So that's what I get to spend my day doing. The current focus of my work is on Apache Tomcat 9. So the agenda for this webinar, I'll start off with a brief explanation of why the Tomcat team felt that an 8.5 was needed, then go on to talk a little bit about what's in Tomcat 8.5, what is it, how does it compare to 8, how do you migrate from 8, and what sort of timescales are we looking at for the transition from 8.0 to 8.5. Finally, I'll wrap up with uh, any questions you may have. If you think of any questions as we go along, please do enter them in the chat window that's part of the WebEx, and then I can address those when we get to the end. So why create Tomcat 8.5? Uh, if you look at what's in Tomcat 9 compared to Tomcat 8, there's quite a lot of good stuff. There's HTTP2 support, there's the ability to use OpenSSL with the GSSE based connectors, uh, there's TLS virtual hosting, there's Jazzpic, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Now, all of that stuff I've list listed, with the exception of Jazzpic, is completely dependent on some fairly extensive and invasive refactoring that was done of the connector code between 8 and 9. And what that means is it's far from trivial to just take those features that are in 9 and backport them to 8. Now, we'd obviously like those features to be available to users in a stable release as soon as possible. The problem we have is Tomcat 9, like all previous Tomcat releases, its first stable release is tied to when the associated Java EE specification is released. And Tomcat 9 depends on Java EE 8, because Servlet 4 is part of Java EE 8, and Java EE 8 has been repeatedly delayed. It's currently delayed until at least the first half of next year, and first half of next year means the 30th of June and it's probably going to get delayed beyond that. So when we first started thinking about this at the back end of next year, we are looking at heading towards two years before any of these features that are available in Tomcat 9 would be in a release that we considered stable that people would then want to use in production. And that seemed like a far too long a time to wait to get them available. So hence we came up with the idea of Tomcat 8.5 to make these features available sooner. Why 8.5 rather than 8.1? Well, it's a bit of a throwback to the Tomcat 5.5 release. Uh, Tomcat went from 5.0 to 5.5 because there were some fairly big changes. And in Tomcat 8 to 8.5, there's some fairly big changes, particularly in, particularly in the connectors. But um, we wanted to sort of uh, make a nod to that previous transition. So what exactly is 8.5 then? It's not 9 and it's not 8. What is it? Well, we started from the Milestone 4 release of Tomcat 9. So it's got all of the features you've got in 9 that I've just mentioned. It's also had BIO removed, so there's no HTTP BIO, no AJP BIO. Comet support has been removed, and all the deprecated code has been removed. We also had to, um, so that's basically what was in M4, so we took that, copied it to create it starting point for 8.5, we then reverted all of the server 4.0 API changes. So the specification APIs in Tomcat 8.5 are identical to the specification APIs in Tomcat 8. If all your app does is use the specification APIs, you don't use any custom Tomcat components, then if it works on 8, it'll work on 8.5. 
Also in Tomcat 9, um, because the minimum Java version was Java 8, we took advantage of that in a few places and we used some Java 8 specific features. That obviously isn't available for Tomcat 8.5 because 8.5 has to run on Java 7. So we reworked the code that depended on Java 8. Now the removal of all the deprecated code we left removed now that might cause a little bit of breakage for applications that do use custom Tomcat components, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this presentation. One of the things we're still looking at is exactly how we want to expose the servlet 4 features in Tomcat 8.5. One thing we can't do is add to the existing servlet APIs. They have to be an exact copy of what's in servlet 3.1. So we have a way of making those features available at 8.5 at the minute, but it doesn't work under a security manager. And we've got a couple of options about, around how we handle that. And we're still sort of thinking that over and tr trying to come up with a, a solution that um, is relatively simple for us to implement, relatively simple for, for people to use, and doesn't create more pain when people migrate from 8.5 to 9.0. And primarily because we're still thinking about that servlet access to those servlet 4 features, then Tomcat 8.5 is currently being released as beta. That's not um, a reflection on the stability of the underlying code. I would be quite happy running Tomcat 8.5 in production today. Uh, the only issue, as I say, is it's the instability of these APIs for the servlet 4.0 features that we need to figure out in the next release or two. So, if you're currently on Tomcat 8 and you want to migrate to 8.5, then what are you going to need to do? Well, we're aiming to make it a seamless process for most users. And as I said, if all you use is the specification APIs, it should be seamless. If it isn't, then we'll do everything we can to fix it and make it so it is. Your configuration files can be reused. If you do want to use some of the new features, such as TLS virtual hosting, then you will need to modify your configuration files to use the new style of configuration for TLS to access those new features, but you need to do that um, if you're migrating to 9 as well, so that's not unreasonable. Uh, probably the biggest stumbling block is going to be the removal of Comet. Um, we're not planning on replacing this. So if your application depends directly on Comet, um, if you're using it through a framework such as Atmosphere, um, Atmosphere will just deal with it not being there. But if you're using Comet directly, you've really got three options. First one is you can stick on Tomcat 8.0, and when we have the final release of that, then you just stay on that release. That's all well and good up until the point where there's a security vulnerability discovered in it because there won't be any more fixes after the final release. So you'll then be stuck on a Tomcat version that's got a security vulnerability that may or may not impact you. So that's a risk. Um, you can revert to Tomcat 7. Tomcat 7 continues to be supported and will be for um, a good number of years. And that has got Comet support and it's not going to be removed. Or you, your other option is to migrate to WebSocket which to be honest is some if you're using comet is something that you're going to have to do at some point anyway because comet's gone in nine as well um, pretty much everybody that was using comet has moved to websocket so if you haven't this might be sort of the um, driver to make you do that but those really are your your three options there and it's the comet users that are likely to have the most work to do between 8 and 8.5 something that might trip you up is some of the features have been removed, such as BIO support. Uh, on the to-do list is putting in a, a workaround. So if you have hard-coded in your configuration that you want to use one of the BIO connectors, that we just log a warning and say, ah, you're trying to use BIO, it doesn't exist anymore. And we, so we've automatically switched you over to NIO. And we, we could do that just to make it a little um, less painful to do the migration. Probably, um, for those users that have written custom Tomcat components, typically those are managers, maybe context, possibly realms. Um, if the removal of any of the deprecated code in those interfaces is causing problems, then let us know. We can always add it back. We're going to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, some of the things that have been removed will be easier to add back than others. 
Um, but generally, most of them, it'll just be a case of, yeah, we'll just, we'll just add the method back and things will start working again. So time scales, what are we looking at? Well, we're ex expecting approximately six months of parallel 8.0 and 8.5 releases. We have got an option to extend that. Um, there's nothing explicitly making us stop releases at 8.0 at any point. It's just when we choose to do so. We think six months will be sufficient, but as I say, if um, as we move forward that shows not to be enough, then we, we can extend that. Releases will continue to be monthly, and we should be do, we're aiming to do 8.5 and 8.0 releases pretty much side by side. Once that period of parallel releases ceases, which I say is currently six months, there will be no more 8.0 releases. Now, given that the first 8.5 release was um, just under a week ago, then the last 8.0 release is currently expected around the end of September. I suspect that will be really early October. Um, and as I say, that might be extended if uh, circumstances dictate that that's necessary. So, before, so that, that, that's essentially what 8.5 is, what the plans are, why we did it. Uh, before I take your questions, just run through sort of the standard get involved stuff. There are lots of ways to get involved in Tomcat and we'd love to see um, some of you that are on this WebEx get more involved if you're not already. And you can ask questions on the users list. If you find a bug, do let us know. If you find a bug and you've got a patch for it, even better, you can attach that patch in Bugzilla um, or you can do a GitHub pull request for it. If you want to get more involved on the development side, then we've got the dev list where all that discussion happens. The uh, primary copy of the source code is in SVN, but it's also mirrored at GitHub and you can, you can work with whichever one you're happier with. It's not just code development, uh, you can update the wiki. Uh, the patches for the website, patches for the documentation, and I really should stress you don't have to be an expert. And when I first got involved in Tomcat, I knew next to nothing about Java, next to nothing about Java EE, very little about HTTP, um, and I was able to get involved. Um, certainly, my uh, rate of progress was a little bit slower than it is these days, um, and I had to do a lot of research to get up to speed, but it is possible, and you absolutely don't have to be an expert. So with that, uh, let me have a look. Do we have any questions? Okay, so why not wait until Tomcat 9? Essentially, um, don't want to wait another year plus before HTTP 2 and the other good features are available for users in a stable release. It's, it's that simple. Um, and we, we could play games with um, sort of long-term beta releases on nine, but people don't put beta releases into production. Uh, we wouldn't get much take up on it. People wouldn't be that interested. So really we need to get a stable release. And because we always tie stable releases to releases of the Java EE specs, then we have to do something, some form of Tomcat 8 with these features. So um, hence 8.5. Uh, any changes in Apache given BIO is disabled? I'm assuming by Apache you mean HTTPD, and the answer is no. Um, AJP is available in all the protocol implementations, and in fact it actually works better with NIO than it does with BIO, because with BIO it's very easy to get thread starvation on the Tomcat side. With NIO that's an awful lot harder. Um, so there, there are advantages to changing the default. In fact, the default was changed in eight anyway. Um, and fundamentally, BIO w was problematic. We couldn't really implement a lot of the a lot of the features we needed to implement with it. Hence, um, it, its days were numbered. Probably even um, not really appropriate for eight either. But we need, obviously we didn't make the decision soon enough to remove BIO from eight. So it was deprecated in eight and removed in nine. Thank you all very much for attending and I hope you found it useful.